I'm going to enjoy the excitement of the event, and I'm going to thrive on the excitement of the event. And I think a lot of people are starting to realize this is the last fight of Ray Leonard, and he's going to get knocked out. The year is 1988. Sugar Ray Leonard is nearing the end of his professional career, and after promising retirement multiple times in the last couple of years, following some of his most significant bouts against the unbreakable Marvin Hagler and stone-cold body snatcher Thomas Hearns, he has decided to make one more defining statement, becoming the light heavyweight champion of the world. His opponent for the title is none other than the original golden boy Donnie Lalonde, a mullet-wearing maniac with a blinding punch and a point to prove. And the fact is, uh, Ray doesn't know when to quit. They all seem to want to have that last chance, try and beat Father Time. Ray can't do it. Can Sugar Ray Leonard become only the second five-weight world champion of all time and solidify himself as possibly the greatest fighter of the 80s? Or will Donnie Lalonde prove too big and too powerful for his inherently smaller adversary and force Leonard to stay true to his constant promises of retirement? Welcome to Boxing After Dark. Tonight, we're looking at what many believe to be the final showing of a prime Sugar Ray Leonard with the hunger that pushed him all through the 70s and 80s with a determination to win that had scarcely been seen since the great man whose nickname he borrowed from decades past, Sugar Ray Robinson. Leonard, much like Robinson, was a jack of all trades, being able to slip and stab venomous blows before his opponent heard the bell and get around the ring like a man not ready for marriage, Leonard was a fighter who instilled fear through his unpredictability. And many of his greatest opponents figured this out the hard way. I, I'm going to commend uh, Ray Leonard. He's an awfully good boxer. He's going to be a world champion pretty soon. And, and I guess I could always say, as a, as a last resort, uh, I was glad I fought a, a world champion to be. Losing just once in his career in the first bout, one of the most infamous trilogies in boxing history, Leonard was beaten to the punch and outmuscled by the great El Mano del Piedras, the man with the hands of stone himself, Roberto Duran. And while he got his revenge in the controversial yet iconic No Mas rematch, Leonard was now proven beatable. But who cares if you get one loss when you can avenge it in such a dominating fashion? This is final, permanent retirement. When with such a warm presence and likable personality, the world fell in love with Leonard and his antics. On the beltway, down the highway, and I think about Duran. My wife sitting there, I start punching her. <laughs> Some refused to believe his good guy persona, most notably his most bitter rival, marvelous Marvin Hagler. He's on an ego trip or something. Yeah. A little jealousy. He's missing the limelight a little bit. But uh, the way that I feel about it, I'm just going to sit back and I'm just going to lick my chops. Like that, it just, it just went. Marvin Hagler made you want to just get out of your house and go running in the snow. Mr. Leonard to my left has said that he will come out of retirement to fight Marvin Hagler if Marvin Hagler will fight him. And their iconic bout led to the most controversial fight of his career thus far, with a split decision victory being awarded to Leonard despite many disagreeing with the scoring across the board. But now came Donnie Lalonde after a year and a half out of the ring and a premature retirement announcement. And Leonard wanted to be a belt holder in a previously untraveled land known as the light heavyweight division. But how does his opponent weigh up mentally? And how much difference will the extra physical pounds create? Donnie Lalonde, although a golden boy in the eyes of the public throughout his professional career, had a childhood colored with crimson from his abusive early days with a stepfather who shared no love. But after finding purpose through boxing, as well as a method of self-defense, Donnie Lalonde embarked on his new muse and decided to become a professional boxer after a short but mostly successful amateur endeavor. Um, ultimately, to me right now, it's just a matter of showing the people of Winnipeg and of Canada that I'm ready for a world title and uh, ready to do them proud. While many fighters find themselves utilizing their strong hand for destructive KOs, for Lalonde, it was a must. Having a near unusable left shoulder for the majority of his professional career, which often needed surgeries or massages, Donnie's left hand was merely used as a shield for blows while his right would set up the victory. And luckily for Lalonde, that was enough for him to win the vacant WBC light heavyweight title against a former champion by the name of Leslie Stewart. Donnie was surrounded by greats and aspired to become one himself. And shortly after winning his title, it seemed he was ready to finally build up a legendary resume fit for a champ. After this fight, he won't want to come back. 
Yeah. But November 7th, it's a totally different picture because that's when Lalonde will meet reality. The fight arrived on November 7th, 1988, and as the two put their titles on the line at a catch weight, the tension remained palpable all throughout the stadium. As the referee recounted the rules and the two fighters touched gloves, the audience remembered to breathe and the bell rang for the first time of the night. Round four is Lalonde's most significant round of the bout yet, as he scores a highly impressive knockdown with a beautiful right cross to the cranium. Still, despite having the upper hand against a clearly underperforming Leonard, Donnie Lalonde attempts to play the long game and wait for the right moment to put the finishing touches on what's expected to be his masterpiece. scores for Lalonde. Leonard got in a right hand. And Lalonde gets in his right. Rib roses. One with the right hand, one with the left hand. And we've seen plenty of Donnie Lalonde. And it's got to be using that jab. Overhand right rocks Lalonde and another one. Leonard going all out and Lalonde is holding on. Oh, after the rough house. Good right by Leonard. A big round for Sugar Ray Leonard. I think as long as Leonard stays on the outside and uses that hand speed. Lalonde blocked most of that left hook. I think Lalonde has let the momentum go right to Sugar Ray Leonard, and he's got to take it back. Lalonde, the marathoner, is in superb condition. Good right hand by Lalonde. It hurt Leonard. His knees just wobbled. He's in trouble. Leonard backs up, tries to hold on. Lalonde trying to follow up and desperately trying to land the big punches. Leonard follows up and lands the right hand. Donnie is breathing hard for the first time in the fight. And Leonard landing that overhand right, right hand, repeatedly. But he's got to be very careful. There he came out trying to suck a shot, went over the head with a right hand. Round seven, scheduled for 12. Five, I've got it 58 56 for Leonard. So do I. 58 56, two points. Sugar Ray Leonard. Good right hand lead by Leonard. Has been extremely effective for Leonard. Now it's Lalonde trying to measure Leonard. Good left cut by Leonard. So Sugar Ray Leonard have been the difference in this fight. And he continues to miss. And Leonard continues to land. Sugar Ray Leonard taunting Donnie Lalonde as the round ends. 
Good left hand by Leonard. Junior middleweight champion, middleweight champion. Good left to the body by Lalonde, but Leonard answers. And Leonard scores the combination. Leonard, despite a reach disadvantage, has landed the jab. Good right hands by Lalonde. And a right hand uppercut. Landed and a straight right, and suddenly Lalonde's right hands are finding the target. Leonard standing toe to toe. Good combination by Leonard again. Leonard looking a little tired, decides to back off or at least try to sucker uh, Lalonde in. You saw Vinny Pazienza try that last fight rather ineffectively. Leonard just did it as good as Ali or anybody else ever did it. He really looked tired. Sugar Ray Leonard. It has been mostly a one-handed fight for Donnie Lalonde. He's used the left basically as a tease. Good left hook by Leonard. Leonard's right hand doing all the scoring. Now it's the left hand doing all the scoring. Leonard is finding it very easy to get in with the left hand. Lalonde landed a couple of combinations. Leonard gets tagged again. Leonard not moving. Lalonde landing. Plenty of time left in round nine. Lalonde is Good right hand by Leonard. Lalonde backs off. He's hurt. Lalonde is shaking up. Leonard going for it. And down goes Donnie Lalonde. Look out. This could be stopped at any moment. Right hand. It's all over. It's all over. Sugar Ray Leonard wins. KO Super middleweight and light heavyweight champion of the world, Sugar Ray Leonard. After the bout, with many praying for a rematch announcement between Leonard and Hagler, Sugar Ray instead took a moment to celebrate such a prestigious fight in his career against the terrifically sportsmanlike Donnie Lalonde. As well as some boxing experts didn't particularly feel that he was worthy. That proved he was worthy. Not just a knockdown, but just his competitive nature. Soon after the bout, both Leonard and Lalonde would recount the fight fondly and admire the night in separate, unique ways. Yeah. You watch him, I hit an uppercut, yeah. left to right hand, left hand, yeah. hit him with everything. Yeah. I actually looked at Richard Steele with a, with a gum shield in my mouth and I said, what do you want me to do? Kill this old man? Stop this fight. You know? Yeah. And within seconds after that, I was yeah. knocked out. I couldn't fight him inside because he hurt me every time inside because he was so strong. It just intuitively happens. I get that second win. When I hurt an opponent, nine times out of ten, I get him out of there. And the same thing happened with Lalonde. Sugar Ray Leonard, soon after his victory against Donnie Lalonde, would find himself having an even more controversial bout than his Hagler victory in his rematch with Thomas Hearns, ultimately leading to a draw which neither were entirely happy with. Leonard would return just twice more after this supposed retirement, first against the vicious and terrible Terry Norris, who would outwork Ray Leonard to a points decision and the next being six years later, in which the also out of his prime Hector Camacho would mercilessly beat Sugar Ray into a fifth round TKO. Leonard, after this bout, would remain retired for good and leave boxing with one of the greatest resumes in not just the 80s, but in all of pound for pound history. Donnie Lalonde, after taking such a crippling loss, seemed determined to regain his title. But after a short while, he flirted with hanging up the gloves just like his opponent often did. It wasn't until three years later that he made his return and had to work his way all the way up from the bottom like he had to do oh so long ago. Despite having some unique yet ultimately charming quirks, such as his strictly vegetarian diet in a very omnivorous sport at the time and his addiction to folk music during training that was infamous for driving many of his stablemates crazy, Donnie never won a title again, challenging only once more at the cruiserweight level against the two-time slippery yet powerful champ Bobby Chiz. Lalonde, since retirement, has been an avid opponent of the TKO movement, which helps find jobs for retired or down-on-their-luck boxers without a dime to spare. Thank you for watching this Boxing After Dark production.